There are other dimensions in the universe beyond the four we know, dimensions cut apart from us by invisible walls of space, time. But suppose there's a snag, a momentary blending of one alien dimension with our own. And further, suppose that through this gap falls an inhabitant of the alien plane. What happens next is the beginning of today's story on Sci-Fi Radio, The Twonky by Lewis Paget. Hey, hey you! What? <laughs> yeah, you, uh, don't. Huh? Well, that's what's written on your uniform. You, uh, you do work here, don't you, uh, Joe? Work. Say, 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 hey, 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 are you drunk? Wrong. Yeah, 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 if you are, you're history, pal. Wrong. Hey, that's funny. I don't smell liquor on your breath. Uh, you're, uh, you're new here, aren't you? New. New, huh? Yeah, yeah, come on. It's a simple question. Uh, do you work here? Work. Yeah. Yes, I work. Uh-huh. Make bonkies. What? I make them. Oh, the stereo radio consoles. Well, uh, uh, why didn't you tell me you were an assemblyman? I wish the front office would let us all in on it when they hire somebody new. I make them. Yeah, 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 Joe. You told me already. Uh, well, I'm glad you can do something. I am expert. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. Make them better than Tong Twak. Tong Twak? Hey, look, I don't remember anybody named Tong Twak. I am expert. Well, then, I suggest you set your butt down and start proving it. Almost done. Need... Need shimmer tones. No shimmer tone. Odd. But these other clonkies don't have shimmer tone. Must be okay. I'll put mine here with others. There. Now, let's rest before I start on new one. Oh, my head hurts. How did how did I get here? Is this a dream? No. Great Snell. I must have had amnesia. I ran into a temporal snag. Got to find it again and get out of here back to my own world. An unscheduled visit has ended. Joe, or whatever his name is, has departed for his own dimension. It's a small discontinuity in the vast scheme of things, a glitch of little consequence, except for the Twonky. See, time is curved, and eventually it gets back to the same place where it started, and that's called duplication. What's that, dear? I... See, yesterday, at this time, I had a martini. And the time curve indicates I should have another one now. Can you hear me, sweetheart? I'm pouring. <laughs> okay, you get my point then. Here's another. Time describes a spiral instead of a circle. And if you call the first cycle A, the second one is A plus one. And that means a double martini tonight. I knew it that way. Here's your martini. But I'm afraid they don't make infinity-proof gin. Yeah, too bad. Ah, that's it. Slowly stirred, not shaken. Great. (laughs) I'm glad. How are things at the university today? Yeah, the same. Gave one lecture this morning and graded midterms all afternoon. How was your day? Boring. But the store did deliver that new stereo console you bought. Do you like it over there by the window? Yeah, that's fine. I think it goes real well with our furniture. (laughs) I would hope so, considering what it cost. Did you try it yet? Oh, no. The old one was complicated enough. These new electronic gadgets just confuse me. All those buttons and numbers, tapes and CDs. Oh, you need to take a course in how to operate them. (laughs) No, I just thought I'd wait till you got home so you could play with it. It's not so hard. I'll show you how. I got some new CDs we can listen to. You'll love them. You really think I can learn to work that thing? Sure. 
Uh, these new ones are pretty good, you know. They, they do everything but think. I wish they could wash the dishes. Or at least at the table. You <laughs> well, it can make those chores more pleasant. Look, I'll put on something classical while you finish with the dinner. Okay. Have fun. Okay, let's see how this works now. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it would help to have a full dinner. Yeah, that should do it. Now the uh, the power switch is right here. Hmm. Ah, the, the blue light. I hope this thing doesn't have a short. Psychology pattern checked and recorded. What? It sounded like a ham operator. I didn't think this would get short wave. Yeah, no matter. Ah, uh, where are those CDs? Ah. Good. Nothing like a little Beethoven and a cigarette before dinner. Do you feel all right? You look a little pale. I, uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I must have dozed off for a minute. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, yeah, it must have been a dream. What's that, honey? Hmm? Yeah, uh, nothing, nothing. Well, something must be bothering you. You usually make a pig of yourself on my dumplings, but you've hardly had a bite. I, I'm sorry. And it's your last chance, for a week anyway. Yeah. Are you sure you can get along without me? Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. You, you go on to Denver. You help Carol have her baby. It's, it's all in the family. I well, she is my only sister. I know. And you know how she and Bill are. Quite nuts. They'll need a steadying hand just now. Yeah. Um, honey? Huh? You did remember to pick up my ticket today, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here it is. Oh, Oh, this flight is earlier than I thought. Well, I'd better finish packing. I'll be down in a minute. Hello? Hi, Carrie. It's Fitz. Oh, Fitz. What's up? Martha gone? Yeah, I just drove her to the airport. Well, then, why don't you come on over and we'll chew the fat for a while? I've got some pretty good scotch we can tap. <laughs> I'd like to, but... Oh, I'm dead. i got a big day tomorrow. How about a rain check? Sure. You know how it is. I just finished grading a stack of freshman psych papers and felt the need of some intellectual BS to resharpen my mind. Uh, Terry, are you still there? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Is something the matter? No. No, I don't, I don't think... Wait a minute. Ah, uh, Fitz, you still there? Yeah, what's going on? Y you, uh... You know those, those new radio stereo consoles that, uh... that can do about anything? Yeah. Well, mine's washing the dishes. Look, I'm not kidding. Now, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm having hallucinations or something, but the damn radio is washing the dishes. Wait a minute. This is a gas, right? No. A and I don't think it's a hallucination, either. That's, that's your territory. Can you come over and, and, and test my knee jerks? I'll be there in ten minutes. Have a drink, Chris. Yeah, you're going to need it. Where's my drink? Come on in and sit down. Where's your dishwashing stereo? It's in there, too. I thought it was doing dishes. It's finished. 
and then it walked back into the living room. It walked, yes. Harry, I think maybe you better sit down, too. I'm all right. You say it washes, mm -hmm. and it walks? Yes. What else does it do? Oh, oh, yes, and it lights my cigarettes. Really? Yes. Is there anything it can do? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, when it uh, came back in here and parked itself, I thought I'd try out the radio. And it worked great on all the stations, really great. But then when I tried a CD, it wouldn't play at all. Oh, well, a minor matter. I mean, if it's a house, uh -huh. let's take a look at it. That's it. Over by the wall. Hmm. It's a nice one. Mm hmm. Otherwise, it looks rather ordinary. Now stand back and watch this. What? I'm just going to take out a cigarette like this and. Well, what do you think of that? It's a robot of some kind. Huh? Only thing it can be. Where the hell did you get it? You don't seem too surprised. I am, though. I mean, I've seen robots on TV and in the shopping mall, of course, but I've never seen one that could light you sick with it who made it. Well, I, how should I know? They're, they're the Mid-Eastern Radio Company, I suppose. Wait a minute. I don't quite understand. There's, there's nothing to understand. I bought this console a few days ago. It was just delivered this afternoon, and then it, then it started doing these strange things. You mean you didn't know it was a robot? No, of course not. I bought a radio stereo, and, and a, I, I don't, the damn thing seems alive to me. Well, I wouldn't say that. It's just some new kind of robot. I mean, what else is there to think? I suggest that you get in touch with the Mideastern people tomorrow and check it out. Yeah, you bet I will. But, but right now, I'd like to try something else. What? I'd like to see what's inside it. That would be interesting. Got a screwdriver? Uh, yeah. Yeah, over here. Yeah, here's one. Okay, let's let's slide that console out so we can see the back. Here. Oh, my God. I don't see any screws on this thing. That's right. It seems to be made out of one solid piece. I wonder how they did that. And these legs, they look like there's some kind of hard plastic. Uh, yeah, but you saw them move. They look like uh, like rubber. Yeah, it's crazy. And there's another thing that doesn't make sense. What else? Well, if someone's made a new specialized sort of robot, why put it in a console like this? Beats me. I'm I'm afraid of that thing. Do you want to stay at my place tonight? No, 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 no. no. I I guess not. I the. Uh, Robot can't hurt, can't hurt me. I don't think it wants to. In fact, it's been helping you, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Well then, that's that. Except for one thing. What? My drink. I think I can really use it now. This is the Mid Eastern Radio Company plant. Good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning. My uh, my name is Kerry Westerfield. I got one of your new stereo radio consoles yesterday, and uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions about it. Of course, sir. I hope it's satisfactory. You know your warranty is good for a year. Yeah, n no, no, it's it's okay, but uh, who made the thing? That's what I want to know. Oh, well, I suppose we can find that out. Of course, I will need your stereo number. Okay, that's the number on the back panel? Yes. Okay, I've got it. It's um, it's six three two. Very well, sir. Our computer records show the unit was completed and shipped out two weeks ago. Yeah. Does it say who made it? No, sir. Would you like to speak to the assembly foreman in charge of this? Yeah. Uh, put him on, will you? Very well, sir. One moment. Assembly is employed. Yeah. Um, are you the uh, foreman? Look, I just uh, bought one of your new stereo consoles, number uh, 632. I'd like to find out who made it. For sure, I keep the record clips right here. Let's good, see. good. Uh, uh, what number did you say? 632. Uh, uh, yeah. Listen, yeah, but there's uh, no name on it. What does that mean? Uh, well, I guess no one signed off on the job. Uh, I don't know how they got by me. Uh, sorry, I guess I can't answer your question. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works fine. Look, you might answer another question for me, though. How do you open the cabinet? You know, if you want to see inside? Well, uh, we recommend you take it to the dealer for service. Well, yeah, yeah, I know, but how do you open it? It's really easy. Just unscrew the panel in the back. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. Had a few beers. That's all. It's no problem. Okay. Good luck. Well, no problem. Hey, what's hey, what what's going on? Let go of me. you do? My, my beers. I, I can't feel them anymore. How, what a dirty trick. Listen, you, you, what, whatever you are, you mind your own business. If I want to get drunk, I'll get drunk. And I don't need your help to get sober. What am I doing? I'm not sure. Stereo. Okay. I gotta get control of myself. Easy, Gary. Take it easy. Yeah. Okay. Forget about the robot. There, my morning lecture. Just uh, read a chapter or two of, of uh, yeah, this. Hey, wait a minute! I need that book. Give it here. I give it. Uh. Uh. All right. There. Damn it! You try coming through a locked door. All right. All right. Sobered me up. That doesn't surprise me. No. No, I mean, it really sobered me up. From a solid 12 beer drunk. It took me nearly two, two hours to get in that shape, and the thing wiped out all the effects in a couple of seconds. Just, just by shining some, some kind of light ray on me. It doesn't make sense. It might. The vibrationary equivalent of thiamine chloride, perhaps. What? In a light ray? There's vitamin content in sunlight. Who knows? But the important point is that the gadget, whatever it is, isn't merely a robot. <laughs> You're telling me. It's a dictator. It wouldn't let me read the book I needed for my lecture tomorrow either. It, it managed to pick the lock on my bedroom door to come after it. Sounds like it's really starting to interfere with you. Look. Look, I'm really afraid of this thing. I still don't think that it means you any harm. But you're welcome to spend the night at my place. No, no damn stereo is going to chase me out of my own house. I'll, I'll take an axe to the thing first. Well, you know what you're doing, I suppose. Phone me if, if anything else happens. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow at lunch. Hi, Carrie. Sit down. No more problems last night, I guess. Oh, I just didn't, uh, didn't sleep too well, that's all. What's that? It's a library's copy of Hassan's social literature. The thing won't let me have mine. But, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's something funny about this book. Funny? Yeah. I don't... Look. This, look, this morning, I went into the library, and I looked at this book. I read it all right, but... 
But it doesn't, it, it didn't mean anything to me. It, it's, it's just words. Read it now. I, no, I, I don't think I can. Go on. Okay, I'll try. see it. But it doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Hey, what do you think? That this machine, or whatever it is, has started to affect you. Maybe you implanted some kind of blocks in your mind. Yeah. Listen, if you'll come to my office tomorrow, I'll give you a few tests and maybe we can find out some answers. I'll tell you this. This thing is starting to scare me now. You better stay at my place tonight. Thanks, Joseph. No, I, I, I can handle it. Hello? Martha, good morning. When did you get back? About an hour ago. But can you come over? I'm worried about Carrie. What's the matter with him? I, I don't know. Please come right away. I'll be right there. here. Where's Terry? He's right here in the living room. There, by the window. Terry, how do you feel? Hello, Fitz. Fitz, what is wrong with you? Is he sick? I mean, should I call a doctor? Have you noticed anything strange about him in stereo? Well, no, why? Sit down. So we figured it was more than a robot. Somehow it's been readjusting Karen. And now it looks like it's taken away most of his initiative. But nobody on Earth could have made something like that. I agree. It seems to be the product of a well-developed culture, quite different from ours. On some other planet, perhaps. It's such a specialized thing that it naturally fits into a complicated culture. But I do not understand why it looks exactly like a Mid-Eastern radio stereo console. Camouflage? But why? Let's look at this logically. Imagine a civilization where a gadget like that has its place. I can't think about that. Fence, I'm too worried about Carrie. I'm all right. It seems to be some kind of monitor. In this other civilization, perhaps everyone has one. Maybe only a few. The ones who need it. Keeps them in line. By destroying initiative? I don't know. It worked that way in Carrie's case. In others, I don't know. I don't want to talk anymore. Carrie needs a doctor. After he's tended to, then we can decide what to do about that thing. It would be rather a shame to wreck it. But I suppose it's the only thing. Oh, Fitz, look out! What? Let's go! Are you all right? Well, I'm okay, but it, it grabbed you, and that beam of light, what did it do to you? I don't know. What? The stereo fits. What did it do? The stereo. Is there something wrong with it? Like that? I'm afraid I'm not much of a repairman. Oh, it did do something, just like it did to Carrie. It, oh, it's a monster! It's a fine stereo. Carrie told me it had all the latest gadgets. You told me it changed Carrie. Don't you even remember? What? I'm sorry, Martha. I guess I'm a little stupid today. I can't quite understand what you're talking about. Now, I'm afraid I've got to go. Or I'll be late for my class. See you soon. Carrie? Carrie, please come back. Yes, Martha. It must be stopped. Martha, what are you doing with that hammer? It must be destroyed, Martha. No. Martha!
remember the, uh, the, the stereo, the damn stereo. Thing you live. <laughs> Subject basically unsuitable. Elimination necessary. Preparation for next subject. We'll take it. <laughs> You're doing the right thing. It, it's quiet, isolated, and the price is quite reasonable. Yeah. I don't know about that, but it's just what we've been looking for. <laughs> of course, an unfurnished place would run a good bit less, but... Well, <laughs> see, we, we haven't been married long enough to get any furniture. Oh. <laughs> I, I think this will work out just fine. Uh -huh. I kind of like the furniture. So, do we have... <laughs> well. Who lived here before? Uh, well, let's see. Some uh, some people named uh, Westerfield, I think. Yes, yes. I, I got it for listening just about a week ago. It's a nice place. You know, if I didn't own my own house, I'd jump at it myself. <laughs> All right. Hey, this is a nice stereo. Uh -huh. Honey, check this out. It's a new one, isn't it? Come on, honey. I'd like to take a look at the kitchen. You're really going to love the kitchen. All of you. Our cast featured Greg Loso as Carrie, Mary Chris Wall as his wife Martha, and Charles Carroll as Fitz. The alien Joe was played by Matthew Scott Carlton, and the foreman was Gary Moody. Other characters were portrayed by Fleur Phillips and Oscar Wills. The original story, The Twonky, was written by Lewis Paget and adapted and directed for sci-fi radio by John O. Williams. All music and sound effects were created by Ron DiIulio. The series producers are Kevin Singer and Ron DiIulio. Support for the program has been provided by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is James Edward Kerr inviting you to join us soon for our next venture into the imaginary worlds of sci-fi radio. <laughs>